Now, what the standard savage Bayesian approach would be is, is, is to say, well, if I'm considered, uh, uh, so I want to think, you know, so what is example of this compound lottery is I've got this risk condition on a model, I've got uncertainty across models, I can do some form of, uh, sleep mode is right here. In the process, kill myself, but we'll see. Uncertainty across models. Um, what, what's a standard Bayesian approach to this? A standard Bayesian approach to this is basically average across these different models. Assign some, say, prior across these different models. Once I have a prior, it tells me how to weight the different models. Yeah, I form some hypermodel, and then I can do look at risk based, based on the construction of that hypermodel. So reduction of compound lotteries, think of this as a compound lottery. Here, here I have some random draw condition on a model. Here I have some extra randomness across models that makes it a compound lottery. Reduction of compound lotteries just says, says that what we just go through, we average across these and form some new lottery that's some, that, that, uh, uh, kind of from this averaging. Okay. Now, this whole literature on risk and uncertainty, ambiguity, concern about model misspecification and the like, is going to break apart these two different steps. And that's going to be really critical. We're going to be thinking differently about risk condition on a model from uncertainty across models. And we're going to, have to, and we're going to, have to kind of think about decision makers as, as kind of really confronting these in rather different ways. So there's, you know, one way to approach this is to say, well, let's go back and, and kind of produce new ax, um, uh, axiom systems. Now, there's work by Seagal and Econometrica taking one stab at it. There's work by Krebs and Porteous in Econometrica taking an, uh, another stab at it. Work that's probably closest to us is work by Klebanoff, Marinacci, and Mukherjee, the uh, so-called smooth man, uh, uh, ambiguity models. I mean, they're, these, these are all kind of going at this axiomatically. And, I'm, and, uh, and, and, and I want to kind of take a little bit of a different take on this. And we're going, to, I, um, we're going to be all about how to parameterize this and how to think about disciplining those parameters. So, so we're, we're guided by applied work. We want to do things in tractable ways, in ways that we can think about <coughs> implementing in practice. And, and, and so we're, and that's going to lead us to think about, about parameters <coughs> and how to calibrate parameters and the like. Now, we're going to have a very specific motivation <coughs> for doing this. Um, and this has to do with robustness. So, so often, you know, when, when I give this research, uh, when I uh, discuss this research, we have theorist colleagues who will say, well, Savage told us that you should just go out and be a Bayesian. And then you can ask them, well, have you ever tried being a Bayesian in practice? And um, I have close friends that claim they're Bayesians. I do research with them. What happens is the first thing they do is, well, Let's change this prior because I think it's. I think this will be more. Uh, this will be easier. To, this will be more tractable. Oh, I don't like the output. Maybe we ought to mess. Uh, maybe we ought to play with this prior over here. Well, or or, or econometricians. Well, this model. You know, I'm going to write it down because it's tractable. It's probably not quite right. But you know, at the end of the day, we have to be able to solve this thing. And and I think lots of aspects of decision making have to do with taking things like approximations, uh, taking some convenient steps to making things tractable and the like. And there's really nothing in this whole savage approach, this reduction of compound lotteries, that, that, that's really designed to address that. And so, yes, it's a beautiful ideal. It's a it's a beautiful idealization, but when it comes to practical decision making, I think other issues have become, become front and center in our discussions. And I think you know, anytime you engage in applied work, you kind of immediately confront this. When you write down your econometric model, you say, "Well, I'm going to make it simple for something <clears> because." Uh, you have to make it actually tractable and, and usable. So we are, we're coming at this from a notion of robustness. Let me tell you what, kind of roughly what I mean by that. And here we're borrowing some uh, uh, terminology from a control theory literature. A rather extensive control theory literature, and, and and this control theory literature, the first step, the first version of it, kind of said, 
What are all these shocks we feed through these dynamic models? They're just completely phony. We're going to replace them with potential model misspecifications. Give up on putting, you know, you know like, we're going to say, well, our model's misspecified. I'm not going to assume that's normally distributed with mean zero and some variance, and that just seems silly. Instead, so instead what they do is they, is they feed through a whole big array of perturbations through, um, through the models, get rid of the uh, randomness, and then, and then try to design decision rules that work well across a whole array of perturbations. Okay, now for us, we want there to be, we don't want to get, you know, get rid of uh, probabilities completely. In fact, the yeah, more recent versions of robust control theory don't either. So, so we want some baseline prob uh, uh, probability assessments, but we don't want that to be the kind of the complete end game. We want to do robustness in terms of the assignments of probabilities here. <clears throat> so when you're going to, we want to look at robustness when, you know, suppose we want to assign uncertainty across models. We want to have our decision maker explore with what are the consequences of those assignments of that uncertainty? How does that alter the decision problem? Um, and, and, uh, and, and do explorations like that. So basically, you know, roughly speaking then, we're, instead of having a model, we start off with, uh, with, with, with kind of family of models. And um, then we think about two different steps. We have the individual models can be uh, misspecified. They can be misspecified dynamics. <clears throat> that leads us to one set of calculations. And the other one is specification, or can be about, well, suppose I just start off with some baseline assignment of these probabilities across the models, maybe this misspecification and that. Or more generally, misspecified estimation. And why do I call this estimation? In a dynamic context, this assignment of, of probabilities across models is typically based on historical data, and it's, and it's kind of continually updated. We use, yeah, from a Bayesian language, we use these kind of posteriors in order to figure out how to weight models. Okay, so that's like an estimation problem. More generally, there might be parameters which we don't know and the like. And, and um, this is misspecified. The reason we like to separate this is misspecified dynamics. So when I solve a dynamic optimization problem, I write down some evolution equation that's supposed to work for the future. Okay. So if that's misspecified, I solve dynamic, uh, uh, the dynamic program in this forward-looking operation solved by backward induction, but, it's, but it's, I'm sitting here today and I'm thinking the model might be misspecified going forward. Okay, now, I get accused of being an econometrician, so this can be a, it might sound insulting, but it's not. Econometricians look backwards. Why is that? Because they're looking ahead. They have to look at a bunch of historical data and ask, what does that historical tell me about stuff today? So it's misspecified estimation is this backwards look, uh, looking operation. You're looking back at data, and it's solved by typically doing these uh, forward induction instead of backward induction. So it's so yeah. These two different these two different contributions are kind of useful to separate for our uh, for our calculations. So that's the that's the kind of baseline motivation. Any questions? Does this sound nutty? We can stop now if it's nutty. I don't know. Well, if it's nutty, we should probably keep going. If it's nutty and boring, we should stop now, I guess. <laughs> no questions? You, you, you have a question? No. <laughs>